Hey guys, welcome to my June 8th DVD update. I talk about all the DVDs and Blu-rays I've gotten, and I'm actually doing this a little earlier than normal. I think it's been about two and a half weeks since the last update. And I'm going to show you all the DVDs and Blu-rays I've gotten over that time. And just today, this just came out. Now this was, I think, out on HD DVD. I never got it, though, on that format. But I got Billy Madison... The, um, you know, I think this has, yeah, this has all the features from the old DVD. Not the original disc, but the one that has all the deleted scenes and everything. And to me, this has always been my favorite of Adam Sandler's movies. I mean, I've liked every pretty much everything else he's done, but this one was always just the one that I loved. I don't know if it was because it was one of the first ones I saw, or what it was. But if you haven't seen it, it's, um, Billy Madison is a, like, um, Adam Sandler's character... Um, lives at this really fancy mansion, and his father owns all these hotels. And um, he's thinking about who to pass the business on. But Billy Madison is such a screw up, he's worried about passing the business on to his son. So they come up with this idea where Billy Madison has to go back to school because apparently the father paid all the teachers to pass him when he was in school, even through college. So he has to go back, and I think it's like three, every three weeks for each grade so he has to pass everything all over again in order to actually you know become the you know who take over the business but this is definitely one to check out and I actually got his new movie which a lot of people didn't care too much for I thought it was okay and it's just go with it and I don't I mean I kinda liked it it's um Adam Sandler and Jennifer Aniston I'm trying to remember I can't remember exactly what happened in it I know um yeah no Adam Sandler is trying to impress this girl that he met the beach um, but then something ends up getting screwed up and she, he, he, oh yeah, he wears this wedding ring because he tries to make the girls that he goes out with feel bad, like he's getting beaten up by his wives and stuff. And he th seems to think that if he acts like he's married, but he's miserable and his wife abuses him, they're asleep with him. But then he ends up meeting this girl that he really likes and he's not, I don't think he's, he's not pulling that on her. But then she ends up finding the wedding ring that he hid in his pocket that he normally uses. Then she gets pissed at him. Then he has to tell the story that he normally does. And she wants to meet the, the wife. And so Jennifer Anderson, who's his friend in the movie, she has to act like the wife. And then her, the kids have to play along. It, it, I don't know. It's pretty funny. Then they go to Hawaii. And this one I got, for, anyway, it's not very good, but I really wanted to watch it again for some reason. It's The Hills of Eyes 2, the unrated one. I don't know, it's, it was, as I remember, it was really strange and really weird, but I really wanted to watch it again, and it was on sale, so I'm like, what the hell, I want to see it again. This one I have never seen, but it looked interesting. It's a Joe Pesci, Christian Slater movie, which I have never seen, called Jimmy Hollywood, so I don't know a lot about this one yet. And this one, I, I kept on thinking I saw this on something years ago. I don't know if I rented it, like when it first came out, uh, or what, but I feel like I'd seen some of this. And they made a sequel to it recently called Be Cool, I think. It's called Get Shorty. And um, John Travolta is like this, um, not really in the mafia, but he kind of collects money and collects debts from people. And he ends up going to Hollywood trying to find somebody. Then he ends up meeting... Oh no, he goes to Hollywood to collect a debt from a director who makes sort of like cheesy movies. And then they end up becoming friends and he tells him about this idea, and then John Travolta's character wants to get in the business of producing. There's a lot of really good character actors in this. I think this is actually from the same director. This one I just showed, Barry Levinson. And Barry Levinson, I've always really liked his stuff. He always, you can always tell it's his movie. He did that other one, um, Big Trouble, which kind of felt like this too. But he also did the Addams Family movies, which I love both those movies, which I can't believe still are not out on Blu-ray, hopefully at some point. But I've pretty much liked everything he's done. I think he did Men in Black. I think he did the sequel. I don't know if he's doing the new one or not. But I've always liked his stuff. And this has Dane DeVito in it. And John Travolta. And, um, you know, Gene Hackman. So a very good cast in this. And now this one I had never seen before. It's very depressing. And I don't know how I'd never seen this before. It's called Awakenings. And it's, um, you know, Robin Williams plays this um, doctor. He gets a job at this um, mental hospital. And he's not really sure if he wants to deal with it or not. And everybody there is kind of catatonic, and most of the people are. And they don't talk. They're kind of just sort of frozen. And he d figures out how to snap them out of it with this new drug. So people who haven't spoken or moved or really done anything for 30 years, 40 years, have snapped out of this. And it's a very, very depressing, sad movie. The... Um, Julia Kavnor, or you know the the voice of Marge Simpson, 
who was also in the Tracy Ullman show, is um, the doctor that she did. A, I, I've always thought she was great. Um, and now these, now Blockbuster had this sale going on, which I thought was a great sale. But then I found out there was another sale, which I could not find anywhere that had this sale. And I'm sure, I know, so I've seen some videos of people who, like, went overboard buying them. But they had a, here's the, the sale that I found was five Blu-rays, which still is a good deal. Five Blu-rays for, um, I think $20. I think it's 20 or 25 I can't, five for 20 either, I can't remember exactly which one it was. It was 20 or 25 But there was a deal going on at certain blockbusters where all the Blu-rays, and I don't think it mattered what they were, were a dollar a piece. And Brendan Mitchell Wet Movie found it, and I know a couple other people found it, but I think it was only the corporate-owned stores or something like that I read, only places that had it. But I got um, Dire of the Dead, um, Starship Troopers. Uh, I'll talk about Dire of the Dead. If you haven't seen that, it's um, George Romero's. And I, I, I always liked this. I actually got to see this in the theaters. Um, you know, it, was, it had a very, very limited run of this movie. And only a few theaters had it in, when I was in Maryland. I guess I saw it at Arundel Mills. And um, it was all shot um, camcorder style. The biggest flaw for this movie was it came out a couple months after Cloverfield. So a lot of people kept, like had this opinion like, oh, it was trying to copy Cloverfield. And it was trying to rip it off. And the, problem, and the thing was, this movie was shot years before Cloverfield. It just took a while to come out. But that's kind of one of the things that, people, that kind of messed up the movie. And it did, why it didn't do as well. And a lot of people didn't like it because the acting wasn't perfect. But I don't know. I, I liked it. It was about a zombie outbreak. It's kind of, you know, continuing the story. Kind of a prequel. It's kind of very straight. It's hard to know how these actually fit together. But it's, like I said, it's all done camera style. I liked it. Um, Starship Troopers 3. And for some reason, I sort of liked this one. The one girl from um, Camp Nowhere was in this. I don't remember everything in it. I just remember I thought it was all right. Now, this one I watched again, and a lot of people really dislike this movie, and they don't. a lot of people don't like Eli Roth. I've never had a problem with Eli Roth. I like his stuff, um, and I watched the second one again. I liked it more than I, than I did the first time, but it's hostile, and this one has the different ending that the um, old DVD I had didn't have. And the different ending was actually pretty effective. I, I kind of wish they went with that in some ways. I'm not going to say what it was, but if you haven't seen Hostel, it's about a group of these two like backpackers going to Europe. Um, it's two of them, then they end up meeting this one guy out there who's from, I'm not sure what country he's from, but they meet him out there, and he's sort of doing the same thing. And they're in one of the countries out in Europe, or I, I maybe explain this incorrect, but one of the pl continents or whatever in Europe, and they end up meeting this guy, and he's like, well, if you want to meet some bitches, or whatever, whatever he says, go to this place, and they're like the easy with him, and whatever. So they end up going to, like, Bulksylvania, or I don't remember exactly where it was set, but they go there, and it's basically, you know, it's a setup, and they end up getting the whole hostel as a setup for kidnapping the guys, and um, I, I don't want to ruin everything about it. I'm pretty much by now everybody knows it. You sort of know it by watching it. But I don't know. I thought it was pretty well done. It was very creepy. I, and I know it's considered people call it like torture porn or whatever. But it's really not as um, like graphic the whole movie. It's like three or four scenes are. But it actually has a story and it's worth watching. And I got Bruno for, as part of this, the deal. And a lot of people didn't like this because of the content of it. I, I always I liked it. I didn't like it as much as Borat. Um I it has a feature on this which the D V D had but it was kinda cut up when it talks about how um everything was done and like the stories behind the scene. It's interesting. This one I haven't watched yet, Away We Go. And this was another one for the for the deal, Flight Plan. Um and Sorority Row, which is one I always thought about getting and I never got and you know it's okay. It's a remake. The original was shot like I think five minutes from where I used to live in Maryland, which was kind of cool. I remember driving by the house and looking at that pond in the front. Cause at first, at first I didn't remember what it was from. Then a while later I realized what it was. And Deliverance, which was a good one I thought to find for that deal. She's out of my league, which was I, I like this one. And The Crazies was the last one I got for the deal. And um, this one I sold like the same DVD. Oh, and the one thing too. 
um, which was interesting, is I didn't realize this, that, you know, it's in this case, but if you really wanted to, you could put it into a normal case and you wouldn't even know it was a blockbuster copy because this thing, the actual sleeve is just taped onto this, glued on. You can just take it off easily. And I, for some reason, didn't even realize that it that was that. I kind of thought, because the way it looks, it looks like it's scanned, you know, like a scanned onto it, onto this blockbuster thing. But so if you want to, if you bought any of these, you can just switch them out and put them in the regular cases and no one ever even know. I may keep them in that because, you know, who knows how long Blockbuster will be around still. And, you know, ten years from now you can go, oh, I remember Blockbuster and look at these cases and stuff. Um, now the last ones I got, and I got this as a Best Buy exclusive. There's a number of them, but this is the one that I wanted the most to that. And hopefully they put out the sequel. And it's City Slickers, the collector's edition. And I always love these movies. I love, I like the sequel almost a little bit more. But it's about um, Billy Crystal gets for his birthday to go out on this um, dude ranch and like you hurt, like hurdle cows and all this stuff. And um, they go out there and have all these adventures and things like that. I can't, I can't remember exactly what all the plots of it. It's one of those ones that you, you just like but you can't really explain much. But I remember he like bursts a cow in it and Jack Palance is in it. And every time I think of Jack Palance, I always think of him in those Taco Bell commercials. It's like the first thing I think of. And the one the one that I always think of is the one with him with those big tacos. Remember, I don't know if anyone remembers this, when Taco Bell did like the big taco. And it was like this huge taco and it had like the cheese with the dots in it, like the red dots in it. <laughs> I don't know, but every time I thought of him, I would always think of that. Now this one I got at Big Lots for like three dollars and I had never seen this people were always mentioning it to me and it's breeders and I think there's one it was from like the 90s as well but um this was actually pretty decent you know it's a real cheesy movie but it's about these creatures that they like rape the women and then the women come back and I don't know they're doing it it was very peculiar it reminded me of like a porno but it wasn't a porno I don't know, because it's like, it goes a little far with some things, and I don't know, and it's it's, it's unrated, and it's like very short. It, it's interesting, though. It's very weird to explain, though. And now I went to that um, Zia Records when I was in Las Vegas and got um, this one thing that I always had heard about. I think I'd seen it once before, never got it. And it's the Tales from the Crypt movie that I think they made and shelved for a while, or something happened with it. And it's um, the, te technically the third Tales from the Crypt film called Ritual with De Jennifer, um, no, with, um, who is in this? Tim Curry's in this. And I haven't watched these yet. I also got this, and I looked it up. It was, like, selling for $30 online. And I knew it was probably a rare one because it's from Pioneer, which you don't hear anything about them anymore. Uh, it's called Bolt Neck. I don't know anything about this. I liked it. It's got the green case they use for reanimator as well. This was really bad. Uh, Evil Spawn. This was really cheesy, but it was, I think, how much was this? Like a dollar or something? And I got this because it's not, I don't, you know, to complete the collection of these. I think I have one more left to get. Children of the Corn 4. And I just got these ones. I still need to watch the Sorority House Massacre films. But anyway, though, um, I'm not sure how long this update was, but I want to try and do these a little bit more frequently so people don't have to wait and they can see the things that I've gotten. Um, I have a couple things on order right now. I got Drive Angry, but I want to wait and show that in the next update after I actually get to watch it. I'm trying to think of anything else over here. I think that's pretty much the only other one over here. I think I got one or two other things, but I'll show all those in the next update. Anyway, though, um, thanks a lot for watching and for subscribing, and I'll see you guys later.